This is an example of creating the solution for the object position calculation programming assignment. I launch Python idle. I create a new file. Even before I begin programming, I'm going to save the file so that it has the correct name and is saved in the correct location. According to the assignment, the name of the file is to be object POSNCALC.py and to be in a folder that is camel cased with the paw print and then object POSNCALC. So I'm going to say save as select where I'm placing my Python projects, create a new folder. I'm going to use my paw print, Musser DA. I uppercase the first letter M because I'm camel casing, and then the rest of the name object, POSNCALC. Create that. And in that folder, I'm going to place the object POSNCALC.py file, and there it is. So now I'm ready to begin programming. And I'm going to place a first comment in the file. Comments are made with a pound sign in Python and indicate that this is the object position calculation program. And then I'm going to put my first line of code. And although this was not stated as a requirement in the assignment, it makes a lot of sense to do this. I'm going to print something to the user so they know what this program is about. So I'm going to print this program calculates an object's final position. And at the end of that line, I'm going to put a slash n, which creates an extra line after that line is printed. So when the program is run, the user will see this program calculates an object's final position, and then a blank line, and then whatever follows. And what it's about to follow is the prompts for the object information from the user. So I'm going to place another comment that indicates what the next block of code does, and that is get information about the object from the user. And there are four pieces of information that we need to collect. The initial position, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time elapsed. Each of those pieces of information will be obtained using the input function. And the input function returns a string but to do the math, we're going to need to convert the string to numbers, in our case, floating point values. So we'll use the float function to convert the input to a number. So the first piece of information we want is the initial position. We'll create a variable called initial position. And that will be obtained by converting the string the user inputs to a floating point value. So we use the float function to convert the input the user supplies. And in the input function, we'll supply a string to present to the user to prompt them for what we want. In this case, it will be enter the object's initial position, colon. And I'm going to put a space on the end so there's a space between the colon and the input the user supplies. That just makes it look nicer for the user. The next piece of information that we're going to collect is the initial velocity. So I'll create a variable called initial velocity that also is going to convert the input to a float. And the user will be prompted with, and I can save myself some typing, by saying, enter the object's initial velocity, colon, space. 
And then we need the acceleration. So acceleration will be convert the input to a float. So we have float inside of it. We're going to get the input. And the parameter for the input will be what we present to the user, which is enter the, got to do that inside the quotes, enter the object's acceleration, colon space. And finally, we need the time elapsed. So we'll have a variable called time elapsed. And following the same pattern, we're going to convert to a float the input the user supplies, and we'll present the user with a string. Enter the time that has elapsed, colon, space. This provides us with the code to accept input from the user in the form of strings, convert those to floating point values, and assign them to variables to hold those numbers. So now we're ready to perform the calculation. And I'll make a comment. Calculate, calc, calculate the final position. The variable we use for the final position will be called final position. And the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times the time elapsed plus, and I can make my window a little wider here, plus it's going to be 1 half, but 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. And rather than dividing 1 by 2 on the computer, I can just put 0 0.5 times the acceleration times the time elapsed squared. Now that we have the final position, we can present it to the user. So I'm going to make another comment. Put spaces there. Another comment that says output final position. And I will print to the user in a string part of the output, which will be the object's final position is. And actually, before the the, I'm going to put a slash n. That will place an empty line before this output. So that'll give us a line between the input the user supplies and this result line. And then the next part of the output beyond this string will be the final position value. So inside of print, we separate the string we're going to output with the variable with a comma. This is a list of items that we're going to output. The first item in the list is a string, and the second item is the final position. I can tell that things are generally looking good even before I run the program because of the syntax color highlighting. Notice that each of the comments is in red. The float input and print functions are in this uh, cyan purple color. The strings are in green. And the other parts, like the equals, the variable names, the parentheses, are in black. If I, for example, left off this closing quote, this variable final position would be green, and that would signal to me that something is wrong on this line even before I run it. So I know I need this quote. So I'm ready to run the program. And when I run it, I'm going to use the sample that was provided as part of the assignment to make sure this is calculating properly. So I'll go up and say, 
Well, even before I say run module, I should save this. And then I'm going to say run module. Notice we have this program calculates an object's final position, an empty line because of the slash n, followed by the first input, enter the object's initial position, colon. This empty space right here is due to that space right there. And I'm going to enter for the initial position 4.2. Then on the next line, the initial velocity of 2.3. Then on the next line, the acceleration of 5.8. And I notice I spelled elapsed wrong, so I'm going to have to fix that. But I can test to see if the math works and I can enter a time of 8.0 and that calculates to be 208.2. Well, let me fix that. Even though the program runs, that's uh, not what I would want the user to see. So I'm going to go back and find that. Enter the time that has, and we're going to change this to elapsed. Spell it wrong again. Elap, lapsed. There we go colon at the end. So we're going to run this one more time. Make sure we didn't introduce any errors. Again, 4.2, 2.3, 5.8, 8 8.0, and we get the result of 208.2. Now let's say we did have some errors in our program. So let's say, for example, um, I named this time elapsed up here as a variable, but when I went to do the calculation, I messed it up. And nothing color-wise is jumping out at me as wrong, but clearly that variable name and that variable name are not the same. So if I go to run the program, it says I need to save it, sure. And I'm ready to enter the information and I put in 4.2, 2.3, 5.8, and 8.0. And I clearly have a problem. And it says traceback, file, and this is referring to the object position calc py file, on line 12. And then it says, Time ELPASED is not defined. And yep, I made a mistake. Time elapsed here should be time elapsed here. And notice that it said line 12. This is a fairly simple program, so it was easy to see where the problem is. But if I click on that line, you see down here that that is indeed line 12. And that is where I needed to fix the problem. So should I run it again? And yes, I need to save it. I could say 4.2, 2.3, 5.8, 8.0, and I get my 208.2. Let's look at introducing another error. Let's say, for example, we missed that quote. So I just saved it using the keyboard save command so I can run the module again and I get this end of line while scanning string literal and it highlighted here in red and I see yeah those those clothing print closing parentheses they're green and they really should be black according to the syntax highlighting oh that's because I'm missing that closing quote and we could run the program again and it runs fine this time now finally, let's look at another problem that can arise. This is uh, something that happens at runtime and isn't a result necessarily of our programming, but of invalid user input. So let's say for the initial position, the user types 2.8 meters. And that causes the program to crash. The reason the program crashes is because this input, which received 2.8 meters, which provides a string, provides the string 2.8 meters to float. And float's job is to convert 
a string to a number, but it can only convert strings that only contain numerical values. And 2.8 meters contains letters in addition to the numbers, and that is not something that float can convert. So in this next module, you're going to look at how while the program is running, you can catch this exception that occurs because the user provided input that was unexpected. And then you'll be able to tell the user, hey, this isn't the kind of input I'm looking for, and then let them try again to enter the input. Now that I have my finished program, I'm ready to zip it up to submit it. So I go to my Python projects and I compress this and the zip file is what I submit online.